the City Council meetings in the year 2016. Um, I will call this meeting to order and advise all of you that around the doors you walk in is the actual Open Meeting Act. If you would, we're going to stand for a moment of silence in the Pledge of Allegiance and we ask that you join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we'll continue with roll call. Frankquist. Lange. Here. Merrill. Here. Clausen. Here. Murin. Here. Moaning. Here. Faust. Here. File. Here. Okay, and under action items, I'm looking for approval of the consent agenda with item 16 to be re removed from the consent and then put on the full agenda. So if I could have that motion. So moved, moved Your Honor. Second. second. We have a motion with a second to approve the consent agenda, removing item 16. If you will please vote. <laughs> All council members voting in the affirmative. And as well, approval of the full agenda with the addition of item 16 from the consent agenda to be added. So move your motion. Second. Did you get that, Beth? Yes. Okay. Again, if you will please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. All right. And let's just start right off taking item 16 from the consent agenda and handling that one first. Consideration of approval of the low bid that has been submitted by DNL Towing and Recovery to provide the towing services for the police division for the period from January 5th, 2016 through December 31st, 2017. I'm looking for a motion for consideration of. I'll make a motion, Your Honor. Second. All right. Um, Lyle, do you want to address this for us? Maybe give an explanation where we are? Good evening, Mayor Council. Um, this topic is the, the towing contract that the city has with a vendor to provide towing services for non-accident related, correct me if I'm wrong, Chief, non-accident related vehicles. So if somebody is stopped for driving while suspended, um, DUI, where they can't drive away from the scene or for snow emergencies, this this is the contract to replace what we've had in position since 2000, uh, 2009. Actually, it was August 2009 that it was started uh, with Mr. Gordy. He's done a fine job for us. It's been re-upped twice in accordance with the contract. It actually finished in August, and we are slightly behind the ball, behind the eight ball to, to continue it on. We did have the bid opening um, on the 29th, and I have those results, and I believe they're in your packet as well. Right. What questions do you have? Questions? Yeah, I had a question. I, sure. I think it was in Gordy's contract that he had like 15 minutes to respond to the whatever the police called him to get to the... And, a, and on a new one, do we have that, or is it just he has 15 minutes to call in and then... There is no specification on time to get there? Well, I don't think it spe specifies exactly the time. Um, I've talked with a gentleman, though. DNL Towing was the, the low recipient of it, and he is, they are very, very aggressive, very excited about potentially getting this contract. I have heard that now the city sounds like they're on our, our towing rotation. Um, so we have been able to evaluate their performance previously. It's different when an accident takes place. If, if you or if I were to have an accident and you wanted to have a specific tow company come tow your vehicle, then you can do that. Otherwise, if you don't care, if there's no preference, they go on a rotation. And DNL, correct me if I'm wrong, is on the rotation? Yes. And has 
provided a, a good quality service for us. Mm -hmm. What, what yes. I was concerned with is if, if there is no time limit to get there, I don't want a problem where the police or the fire is sitting there for 45 minutes and continuously waiting because then we're going to have a public safety problem. That's one of my concerns, and then I have a couple other questions. When sure. We... Okay. Go ahead. Um, uh, Councilman, uh, one of the things that we implemented uh, several years ago was whenever a, a wrecker service is called out, uh, particularly in our rotation, but generally any time we request a, a wrecker, uh, dispatch will note the time that the request was made, and then when the wrecker arrives at the scene, uh, the officer will call in and notify dispatch when they actually have arrived. So we've tried to track the response times of all record services that are on our rotation. And that way, if we have a situation where uh, we're starting to get uh, a service that's taking longer and longer to get there, that can be one of the reasons that we may either warn them that they need to, to pick it up, or if necessary, uh, drop them from our rotation just because it's taking so long. Now, if we drop them from the rotation, that doesn't mean that somebody can't request them. Uh, whoever wants to request a specific tow service, we contact that service and they come and get them. But if they have no preference, then we go ahead and go to our rotation and uh, we monitor how they all are. I've not been advised that we've had any issues with any of the tow services that are on our, our uh, rotation list right now, uh, at least none that I am aware of. Okay. And there is the 15 minute time requirement for contact of notifications listed under the availability provisions. Okay, just to contact and say I'm on my way or to get there? After 15 minutes after notification, the police division may call an alternate tow, tow service and the contract may be unilaterally terminated by the city. Okay, if they're not there then. Right. Okay, I just wanted to see if we had a way out or a way to manipulate around that if we need to. And I know Gordy did a lot of things for the city like take some of the vehicles out and the firemen uh, practiced in them basically and stuff. Do we have any arrangement with the new people in that? Yes, aspect? we do. We have uh, indicated that that's the, the case as well, that Gordy has pulled them out, <coughs> the fire department, police, even potentially other communities could come train on those structures and uh, they have about four weeks to remove them after that process has taken place. And, and they agreed to the same? Yep. So okay. that hall is slightly different from, from the training facility to an impound lot. There's some preparation that needs, needs to be done to the mm -hmm. vehicle, moving the batteries, removing the batteries, um, fuel, some various other things so that it can be crushed. And that, that's portrayed in this okay. spec as well. All right. Thank you. Is, is this a service that's bid out on a year-to-year -year basis? It hasn't been bid out since 2000 nine um, when Mr. Gordy did get it and then in accordance with the contract if it's agreeable mutually agreeable with both parties um, I think it was two years initially and then extendable for two terms of two years each which took us to August of this year and so the last time it's been bid out was 2009. And, and so the next bid would be two years from now? Um, potentially. If, if they don't fulfill their uh, requirements, it, it could be six months from now if, if, if we have to cancel their services. As it's written right now, it's a two-year contract with a, a possible extension for two terms of two years each, similar to what it was before. Any other questions at all? If I, if I might just uh, add here, uh, we've had a, a great working relationship with Gordy. I can hear uh, all the officers uh, really have appreciated uh, the timeliness in his responses, his willingness to work with them, help them out, do all of that. So we have absolutely no complaints uh, about the relationship that we've had. Uh, he's done a fantastic job for us. Um, so, uh, but uh, again, I, I don't have anything about any of the other people who added bids that would make me question whether or not uh, they would be able to fulfill the terms of the contract. It is something we will monitor uh, because we, uh, we never had any questions about Gordy and his ability to, to do that. With a new service, uh, that's something we will want to monitor closely uh, to make sure that we're not having any issues uh, along those lines. And if so, then we would be back to you to ask to see about addressing them. Okay. 
Appreciate it. Chief's up here. Any other questions? Council? The uh, unit prices that you, or not the unit prices, the units that you developed, 160 tolls a year, 280 tolls a year, 15 tolls a year. Is that historical tolls, or how, how did we come up with that, or is that just pulled off of that's the based former off bid sheet? About an average of the last two years. Okay, that's what I was wondering. It's, um, it's you know, an estimate. It's not a hard and fast rule right. that this number is guaranteed. This is just a, a no, ballpark figure of what to expect. That's what I was wondering, if it was a statistically developed number, or if it was a reach in the hat and pull a number out. No, I, I guess uh, <laughs> if those are the choices, it was statistically developed over two years. Okay. Thank you. What would be the uh, what would be the the number of uh, late calls that would prompt you to question the contract? Well, I think uh, that would be somewhat of an arbitrary figure. Uh, one of the things that we would look at is that if we did have an issue, it's not like okay, you're late once now, sure, we're going to be back. It would have to be a recurring problem. And then if there was no reasonable explanation for it, and if it continued to happen uh, over a period of time that would be a point where we would say, okay, yeah. Where, where we will find out about it is we will hear officers begin to gripe about it. Uh, and uh, they're, they're pretty used to having timely response, and if they're not getting a timely response, there's nothing that they hate more than sitting there waiting for someone to show up. And so uh, we will hear about it, and if they can't correct it after we have talked to them about it and encouraged them to, to fulfill their uh, contractual uh, obligations here, at that point, we would then talk to Shane and see about bringing the matter back before the council. But it, it, we, would, we would try to work with them and, and try to get them to meet our needs. And if it just doesn't seem like it's working out, that's when we would come back to you then. Thank you, Chief. OK. Any other council? All right. I appreciate your being here. Um, Lyle, appreciate your efforts as a new risk manager. I think that's um, exactly what we need to be doing, is certainly having to look at those kind of things. So. Thanks for the effort. Um, Thanks for welcome to the world, huh? Appreciate it. OK. <laughs> Gordy, I appreciate you being here. Do you have any comments? Please come forward. Um, state your name for me, if you will, and sign in. I'm Gordy. Gordy Wellman. OK. This is for the record, Gordy, that we make you ask you to okay. sign in for, so if you would. Okay, since I've had the contract for all these years, I bid it to be able to be 24 7, 365. So that's the reason I got the price I did, which is higher than what the lowest one is. So, anyway, I do a lot more than just the basic towing stuff. For the city, I've been doing the, the unlocks for the kids locked in cars. I never charge the city for it, and I don't charge the people for it. I'm still willing to do that for the city because just because. The kids don't want to be locked in there. Um, I'm still going to provide classes when they ask me to do it because I've done that to where I help show them new recruits. You know, if somebody comes up to hook this car this way, run as fast as you can away from it because it's going to come apart. You know, things like that. I'm still going to do that for them. Um, the contract ends tonight, I suppose. I don't know when it starts. Nobody's told me that. At midnight. Okay. Just want to make sure I know that. Okay. And then. Um, if it's approved. If it's. Yes. And then um, for the vehicles I towed out there, I got a list of cars that I've towed up to this date. Okay. That if it comes up mm -hmm. to the city needs and be hauled, I still in my contract from before, I'm still going to honor that contract of picking them up and hauling them down mm -hmm. to get them processed in that. And, you know, to finish yeah. out my contract. As long as. Because that's part of the contract. Well, I so appreciate that, Gordian. It's not that I'm going to say, "Man, eh, it's yours." You know, I'm walking away because I still learned a long time ago that the police department, and law enforcement, and fire guys aren't giving me work. I'm there to help them, and then the work just comes with it. You know, there's so many places of businesses think that the law enforcement people are supposed to give you toes, which that isn't what it's about. So that's the only thing I really need. And um, I think I've 
done just about everything well, that I told you we tried to get. So we appreciate that, yep. and and I want you to know that on behalf of certainly this community and the elected officials before you and our city staff, your work has been certainly nothing but exemplary. So for that, we're very appreciative. Your willingness remains, yep. and certainly um, I will let you carry that conversation on with those that would be responsible for um, making sure that your willingness is certainly handled in the right way. I mean, I, I'm not quite sure where we go with this from now, no. Gordy, because again, I don't know that all of us really realize the impact that you've had, but I do know, you know, again, it comes down to the responsibility of us as elected officials to certainly take a look at. Yeah. And you know, if, if you could, I really, I mean, I'm gonna be very honest with you when I look at where you had been and where you are now, what changed? If you can help me maybe better understand or help us better understand. If you look at what the cost of insurance is, sure. what you gotta pay somebody to be on 24, seven, 30, 65. You know, when I had bid back in 09, it was lower and I just kept doing it because I felt, because, um, Probably a lot of you don't remember, but Henry Bernstraw sure. was a towing servant. Yeah. And he's the one that told me that you're doing this because it's for the city. It's not because you're looking for more work. But you've got to be able to afford to pay somebody. Right. I understand that. You know, if you can't yeah. afford to pay yourself, what are you doing it for? Right. And then I did lose the contract before 2009 to somebody that I did bid, just the way this one's happening. And then end up. He quit because he couldn't make it. He was starving, you know. And he gotta. That's what I evaluated yeah. what I'm doing. Right. And well, I went through what all the fuel costs, what your service is, and what you gotta replace trucks with, what you gotta have an employee on for benefits for. Well, just like yeah. city workers, what yeah. do you gotta do every year? You evaluate. Okay, he's gonna get a raise. Okay, and that's yeah. like um, if you go in the contract to say five. I think it was five to seven percent of the cars don't get picked up. Well, when we started this contract, that's when we started to do the salvage deal because it, it's now I think you can look back in. It's proven to be better scrapping the cars than it is doing the auctions. Because when I first started, that's what they used to do was auctions, and I don't think the city ever made anything out on that. They lost on it, I'm sure, just because of the prices they got for the car, and then plus all the advertising and everything. So see, that's what I evaluated too. Right. And, and yeah, the, there was a couple times people complained there's extra cars out there. But I held them up until the price of the scrap came up. And now the scrap's coming up this week, $30 a ton. So what would you take it in? $30 less or $30 more? What's going to get the city more, which is everybody's pocket because you're not going to pay out sure. cost, right? Yeah. So that's kind of what I've done too, not really, you know, yeah. just to help out, but, you know, well, I, re I appreciate that because, like yeah. I say, I, I, I will tell you, it was one of those things that when I looked at where you'd been and where you yeah. went, I, and respectfully so, you know, but you are. But last, over the last year, for what I had to pay for insurance and that, I really, I should have just said, no, I don't want to do it, but it wasn't. Yeah. It, I just feel for the officers and that, I, I enjoy working with them. That's mm -hmm. got to be the biggest thing because I... I can truly say I like going out to help them. And I can truly say they enjoyed you too. Yeah. So. so uh, but, you know, all right. Well, I'm sure the, you'll you'll have opportunities with. Yeah. yeah I that's appreciate the that. That's price is where it's at because I had to get it because now this next week I won't be in service because I'm going to have a shoulder replaced. So I'll be out for at least six weeks, easily. So then <laughs> I got to pay somebody to do my right. job now, and then they got to be able to do my job, which then. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I understand. Thank you for being here, and, and I appreciate the way that you respectfully have handled this yeah. and your interest like in what's say, going I'm on. I'm not going to give up on the contract stuff. Good. Got like the cars are out there still. That once Sue or whoever gives me the titles, say they're ready to go, I'll do right up to the last one I had towed out there with the contract because that's part of the deal. Okay. Thank you. All right. It's a deal. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, next on, uh, I'm sorry, we have a motion and consideration here for um, the approval of, better go to item 16 here, 
of the low bid submitted by DNL Towing and Recovery to provide the towing services for Police Division for the period from January 5th, 2016 through December 31st, 2017. Please vote. All, council. All council members voting in the affirmative. All right, and now we're gonna jump on to the public hearing uh, at the request of Union Pacific Distribution Services for a hard servicing waiver on property at 1691 South 25th Street. I will open this hearing. And who's gonna to speak to it first? That'd be great. I've signed in for the record. Okay. Hi, I'm Doug Graham with uh, Union Pacific Distribution Services located in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, I'm here in front of you today to ask for a waiver associated with your normal 100 foot uh, pavement requirement to go to a 50 foot pavement requirement for our entrance to our new wind distribution center located on uh, South 25th Street. Uh, the reason for that is that we are uh, using a hard surface on the facility. Um, I know that the reason for the 100 feet is to um, allow uh, material like rock or things to uh, uh, fall off before it hits the, the main street. Uh, we're actually going to be asphalting to both a gravel street and to an asphalt street. As, as you may know, where our entrance is, uh, there's a railroad track, and south of the railroad track is a, a rock county road, and north is a uh, asphalt county road, so we're going to kind of uh, blend in our entrance into the, both of those roads. So it's kind of, in some cases, we will be coming across rock onto asphalt back onto a hard surface, and uh, some of the cases we'll be going just asphalt to asphalt. So uh, that's what we're asking for. And any questions? You have him in front of you, Council. Anyone have a question for him? Thank you for your consideration. Okay, thanks for being here, Doug. Anyone else that wants to come forward and speak to this? Val, do you have anything you want to add to this? Any staff looked at this? Looked at this, I'm certain, and. Staff did look at this and the Planning Commission approved the 50-foot waiver as it's being requested. Um, also the waiver request is for a gravel parking lot for the employees because that is normally um, wanting to be asphalted or concreted too, so that's part of the waiver also. Okay. Any thoughts at all, Council, or questions? Question, Val. Um, Engineering didn't have any problem with it. They did at Planning Commission suggest just because normally it is 100 feet instead of 50 that um, they did put that before Planning Commission to be 100 foot instead. But uh, based on what Doug had told them that it's rock and um, that there's going to be asphalt shavings and things going on top of that to fill in that that's, I think, believe why the Planning Commission approved the 50 instead of the 100 that the Engineering Department suggested is our norm. Okay. Can I ask that? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, we, we, we plan to, uh, it's obviously compacted rock, very compacted, and, and the, the uh, wind components that we're going to be handling are heavily with uh, tracked cranes, which will compact it even more. Um, but we are planning on putting a, an asphalt grinding top on there, uh, and that will control dust as well as uh, keep it compacted. Um, and the, you know, this is a temporary facility where we're only operating for, we have a contract for about six months after we start in April, and, and then after that we're not sure where we're going to be. But the, uh, the, 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 the ground will be very hard, and we also committed to uh, the planning committee, if there's any issues with uh, debris on the roads, uh, South 25th uh, Street, we would clean that off and, and watch and maintain that, and make sure we brush that off so we have an agreement to do that also. So we can, we can we'll watch that, make sure we understand what you're trying to do and we want to be good citizens, so. Yeah. Um, you mentioned a uh, plan for temporary use. Um, now, if, 
things look differently after six months and uh, there is a, a long-term use projection, uh, we consider um, look, revisiting this and, and uh, paving the entire stretch. I think if it's necessary, sure, we could talk about it. I, I, I mean, we, we plan to remarket this facility and try to sell it year after year and, and come back to uh, Norfolk and bring wind projects here. And we're at the mercy of our customers on that, right? Uh, at this point in time, we have one agreement in place. Uh, allows us to operate until about October 30th or so, 31st. Uh, that contract, once that's over, um, we don't have any other projects slated at this time, but again, we'll be remarketing and trying to uh, bring more wind projects here. Okay. okay. Thank Thanks, Doug. Anything else, Val, that you want to add to that? Okay. All right. Council, any other questions or anyone else? As this is a public hearing, anyone else that may want to speak to this have questions of? Okay, if not then, no further discussion from this group. Do we have a Planning Commission report, Beth? On Tuesday, December 8th, 2015, the Norfolk Planning Commission reviewed the application for a modification of hard surface requirement requested by Union Pacific Distribution Services for 1691 South 25th Street. The Planning Commission typically requires 100 feet um, exiting a property but they determined 50 feet is acceptable due to a temporary nature of the use and the plan to use uh, for crushed rock to fill 8 to 12 inches deep the planning commission recommends approval on an 8 to 0 vote okay and with that i will close this hearing then and look for a motion for consideration of resolution number 2016-3 approving a hard servicing waiver for union pacific distribution your Honor, I'd offer for consideration resolution 2016-3. Second. Okay, we have a motion with a second. Any further discussion? If not? Your Honor, I'd say just one thing. Sure. I, I, I have no real problem with this at all because uh, for the time period that, that he's running right now, I have SWIP plans in place that have do not have hard surface coming back off of them, SWIP's uh, stormwater protect protection thing and they're doing more here than than what we're having than what than what the SWIP plans require statewide so I think they're being real good stewards so well I appreciate that councilman and if nothing further I'd ask for your vote all council members voting in the affirmative resolution 2016-3 is adopted okay thanks Doug we'll look forward to seeing you here shortly Thank you. permanently for a while yeah. All right, under the regular agenda, consideration of approval to accept a bid of $281,599.02 from FireGuard to purchase replacement MSA SCBA equipment for the fire division. I'll make the motion, Your Honor. Second. Okay, we have a motion with a second. Discussion on this. Lyle, are you coming forward again? <laughs> I will stand by. Okay. Mayor and Council, this is uh, the, this recommendation before you tonight is a culmination of about two years of research and planning and specification development and, and testing of the various products. Um, a lot of hard work from the committee members. Each shift is represented by that on that committee. The guys on the street doing the hard lifting and uh, worked hard to develop a, a good review and evaluation of these air packs. It's a large amount of money. It's a 15-year investment for us, and it's probably the most critical lifeline to to their to the equipment that they use on a daily basis to go into a burning building. So it's a critical part of our world. Um, we view this as a very important um, approval that's being, being discussed tonight. Um, MSA has been a uh, product choice of us for decades at Norfolk Fire. We're used to it, we're comfortable with it, and we believe in it. Um, this bid proposal um, satisfies all those requirements and is um, wholeheartedly bought into by the members of the fire division as far as their trust and belief that this product will keep them safe when they when they need to use it. So um, met with the subcommittee and discussed this with them and I uh, wanted to come before you all tonight for your consideration for this awarding of this bid to FireGuard and the MSA air packs that we've chosen. So I'll certainly answer any questions you might have about that. SCBA. Self-contained breathing apparatus. Thank you. I'm sorry. 
No, that's quite all right. That's, any questions at all for Chief? Okay. No further discussion? No questions? Then I would ask for your vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. Motion carries. Okay, next, Randy, we're looking to you for the December sales tax report. Yes, you have in your agenda packets the December sales tax report, which is primarily October uh, sales, receipts that we received in the December of the sales tax. And you can see we've got $866,747 um, sales tax receipts for December and one half cent sales tax receipts for $630,000 of that. And as you can see from that report, they're down about $34,000 or 5% from the prior year. And it sounds like a broken record, but that's due to the June 2014 hailstorm. You can see that for uh, the last several months, we've been consistently down from the prior year by significant amounts. We realized we were going to be down and we put the budget together, and we've been tracking very closely. Any questions, Council at all for Randy? Okay, hearing none, I think we'll move on then. Appreciate your being here, Randy, as always. And next, Fire Chief Scott Cordes is gonna come before us and give us the Fire Division's 2014-15 annual report. Mayor and Council, um, Beth reminded me that it's Bethine's birthday today, so I yes. promise you I'm going to go quickly for her benefit. So if that's all right with you, I'm going to highlight just a little bit. I'm sorry, Bethine, I'm picking on you back there, but in, <laughs> just a little little humor to start the evening. So first and foremost, uh, on behalf of the men and women of the Fire Division, I just want to thank you all for giving us the privilege for you all. It's a blessing and an honor um, for all those men and women that, that are serving the citizens. Uh, we're lucky to be a part of such a great organization, so we thank you all for the support that you continually give us so that we can do the job that we, we're being asked to do, so I sincerely mean that. Um, I just want to touch on a few highlights. I know you've got electronic copy of all of this, and so I'm not going to repeat a bunch of statistical numbers and things, but a few things stand out. And the first, first and foremost, I mention this every year, um, no serious injury or death came to any of the members of the fire division. It, it seems like something we often take for granted, but it doesn't take long to read, read somewhere else where bad things are happening to good people. And uh, when we make it through a year without that, um, it, it's something to be, to be recognized. And so we're grateful that that didn't occur with us. We're currently fully staffed, both with all the full-time staff and uh, the reserve staff. Um, we have no current vacancies. We had a series of promotions this past year. Those positions are all filled, and uh, we're blessed to have a full complement of staff. Um, this report will include the last time you'll see a planning commission entry for us. Obviously, you're all aware that duty has been transferred to administration, and, and Val can be talking about that in the future. So it'll be the last time the fire division report has a planning commission entry. Um, regarding the prevention bureau, uh, if you look at our statistical numbers there, each category, all the four major categories of permit issuance, that being building, plumbing, mechanical, and electrical, all saw increases over last year. Those are positive trends that I hope continue. Um, and we are currently working, uh, Trent and the staff are going to be working with uh, the various committees um, to implement the adoption of the 2012 International Code Series. Um, so those committee assignments are being developed as we speak and over the next uh, period we'll be coming before this body with a recommendation to adopt the 2012 Building Code and its complement uh, of, of additional code series. That is pursuant to action taken by the state of Nebraska this year that changed the statute. 2012 is the code of the land. Um, for us to, to strive to achieve. So we will be working on that in the upcoming year. And uh, many of those, the home builders group, the plumbing and mechanical contractors, all the various contractors will be involved in having input on what those changes are gonna be so there's no surprises to them. Um, on the operations side, a very busy year this year. Um, a lot of time spent with training and developing specifications for equipment just like you just approved. 
um, just like the ambulance that you all approved for us several months ago that will be taking delivery on here at the end of this month. So it'll be a brand new ambulance running up and down the streets in Norfolk within the next 30 days or so, and we're excited about that. Um, you authorized the purchase of a tanker tonight. That, that work's been going on for two years now, developing those specifications. So there's an awful lot of time spent doing good homework and do, doing the background work needed to make good, sound purchases that are going to last the community a long, long time. And so the staff have worked very, very hard on that. Um, Busiest year in Norfolk fire history this year. It's a, it, it, those numbers don't lie. Um, our calls for emergency response continue to go up. Um, we ended the fiscal year higher than any other previous year, and we just ended this calendar year higher than any other year. Um, 2,421 calls as uh, at midnight on December 31st. So from 2003, when we last added staffing, that's an increase of about 21% total calls for service. And uh, it represents the times that we're in. Those, are, those follow national trends with uh, increased emergency medical calls being the lion's share of, of, those, of those responses. So um, it's something we have to pay attention to and be, be alert to. Um, and so we'll work on that and then I hope to have the opportunity to visit with you all at some point in the upcoming year about what those numbers mean to us and how we continue to provide the service to the citizens. So those are just kind of some highlights of, of this document. Um, there's certainly a lot of information in there statistically and, and so forth. If there's anything that stands out or any questions we could answer for you, I would try to answer them. Or if not, I will kindly sit down and let Bethane enjoy her birthday. So, <laughs> uh, whatever all you, you might like, I'll try to answer. Well, Chief, we always appreciate you coming before us and again, your words of this council supporting, this community supporting, and as well the staff supporting your efforts. It's certainly turned around both ways. We always know you're there in need, so it's, it's a comfort for this community as well. Thank you for what you do. Thank you to those that are right behind you through all this as well. So um, it's a win-win for all of us. So it, it amazes me when I look at some of these numbers and, you know, I think every time you think there's an ambulance going out or a fire truck, you should be hearing the loud bells and whistles and everybody be aware of it. And I'm thinking I don't hear them that often. But obviously when you look at the numbers, there's a lot that's going on that maybe sometimes we don't even realize. So at probably some of those hours in the morning mm -hmm. when the rest of us are sound asleep in our beds. So for those of you that get up on those, um, or are out on those early morning calls, cold mornings, again, our thanks. So. Any questions at all for Chief while he stands before us? I would echo the mayor's comments. Great job. We, we owe you guys a debt of gratitude, that's for sure. Thank you. One, only question I, I have, and so I don't know if you can answer it. On fire calls, we went from 321 to 358. Is there a category in there, Chief, that maybe the public needs to be aware of, something that's maybe causing those that, that you could uh, delineate for us? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I wouldn't say that we identified any uh, trends of concern re regarding a particular occupancy or anything. Uh, we've been fortunate the last couple of years to have fairly dry or fairly moist seasons. You know, we haven't had the, the dry, heavy grass fire complement that we had for a while. Um, there's no particular occupancy category that's uh, alarming in terms of those numbers. So I guess I, I don't have any specific one to point out to you, sir, that would be, be problematic. Um, you know, the reality of is most fire fatalities, which is obviously our number one mission, is to avoid those happening. They happen at home and they happen at night when we're most vulnerable and we're asleep. And so, the, you know, those areas are, are certainly places that we want to concentrate on. Um, but uh, the trend of over, over, overall fire calls, I guess we're up a little bit from last year, 10 is, is continuing to go down in most better construction methodology, mm -hmm. better products out there. Good, good code effort. I mean, a combination of a lot of good people doing a lot of good work. So, um, so we're we're heading in the right direction. But uh, you know, never never can stop doing the public education part of it and encouraging those those safe practices. So, but that's a fair question. If 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 I see anything step out of that, I'll sure to share that with I'm, you because I'm sure you would. Once again, thank you very much for all, all you guys do for us. I see Dr. Server still in the picture. Is he still staying close with you in some of the efforts that certainly he was such a strength for so many years? Uh, great question, Mayor. Uh, Dr. Server is uh, very much still our medical director. Is he he okay. is in the station almost daily. He works intimately with our staff on a regular basis. Uh, the lieutenants, uh, one on each shift, are the primary EMS coordinator 
folks for, okay. for those activities. He works very closely with them, developing protocol, any policy changes, any, any new training technologies or methodology. So I would, to say that Dr. Sherber is involved would be a gross understatement. He is extremely involved. Um, I did not realize he was still involved. With it. Very so active. great, very fortunate we are. Yeah. So great picture too there of all you. So anything else, council? Thank you. All. Thanks very much. Happy birthday, Bethine, from all of us that are sitting up here in front of you. So thanks for being here. Um, with that, we're adjourned.